So I'm always interested to see, like, when did you realize our house was a little different than maybe, like, your friend's house? It took a while because <laughs> I didn't know what was going on and I just didn't question it. I definitely wondered what you felt seeing sometimes complete strangers in one day become family and not know they were in a crisis. And the fact that, like, it started when we were all so little, it's like, I don't remember much of a time before it was like that. So it's just like I was raised into that, too. And that's why it doesn't feel super different, because it's just how I grew up. So how did it start? It as in, like, just taking people in and, like, when was the first, like, what was the first person? Like, what was the first, like, circumstance? Or, like, how did you know you needed to do it? I was asked. I mean, it was a choice. I helped women um, figure out if they wanted to go to, like, a safe house. And sometimes, like, the first instance, the safe house was all the way in Kentucky. So to coordinate that, you know, they might stay, like, we were, like, the pit stop on their journey to somewhere else is how it started. I knew God placed them in our lives too, to be family and stay. So it was just deciding to sit like next to them in their mm -hmm. pain and just say like, you know, your pain doesn't scare us. Like you're still lovable. Right. I think that was the most yeah. important part of like what our family did mm -hmm. was if you can't, if you don't have a family to go back to you can just be a part of ours. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think the past three years, I think we officially realized like God was growing our family. Mm -hmm. right. Like I don't see us as just our immediate number anymore. Um, they need family. That's like, yeah. and I think it doesn't matter like what else happened in their story. Um, we just want them to join a new story that, like, God has a plan. So for me, I enjoy seeing you serve through the ministry and trying out all the different ways and opportunities through all the local area nonprofits and seeing you <laughs> go from but like now I'm doing the normal it, ones. Like, to being like, I have to sign up yeah. and try new things. Um, like that's where people start. Usually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like working my way backwards. I think that's why we get timid and shy about sharing is because mm -hmm. like we never planned it to be this way. But we definitely encourage when people see who are near us what we're doing, it gives us a chance to show the people around us, like how to serve that, you know, it started for me with doing arts and crafts, right. which is like my passion with a friend at a safe house, but relationships build from there. And everyone seems to get inspired mm -hmm. in a different way of how they want to choose to support survivors and, or join an outreach because team. Because there's so many different ways. This isn't the only way. Like you don't no. have to. It's definitely not a routine way <laughs> right. to sign up as a housing unit. Um, but, you know, being on outreach, you know, with another nonprofit in the middle of the night and just seeing the need mm -hmm. and seeing these girls on the streets um, opened my eyes. I definitely don't regret it, but yeah. it definitely was hard to mm -hmm. not know um, what the next day would bring. Mm -hmm. Definitely built our faith and... I really got to see you guys grow into your passions because I was kind of out on a limb asking God to help me live for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. <laughs> so true. <laughs>